Well, my building of things is is many things. It's uh, it's especially since for most of my life I did not have land of my own, and I was doing things for other people. You know this. And when I got this land, I was maybe 50, 51 years old, and I realized I would have a lot of ideas. And, you know, there was a biological clock ticking, and I had a lot to do. So uh, besides the fact that I really enjoy expressing myself on land and uh, uh, manifesting my ideas, it was also just important to me as a form of expression. And bringing me a lot of... Uh, uh, satisfaction and it wasn't uh, as you've probably gathered it wasn't because I wanted to make a big splash in the world or have a lot of acknowledgement or uh, it was just something that just purely gave me joy I enjoy sharing it with other people what I've done uh, but it was also importantly a kind of therapy for me kind of like an occupational therapy it helps to take me out of my mind uh, in areas that I don't want to go, and uh, and I do take such delight, and I and it really occupies a very nice percentage of my mind, and of course a lot of times it keeps me from sleeping. But uh, I love to build spaces. I love to make spaces. I like spaces that are safe, that feel good, uh, that are delightful to be in, that that are serene, that bring solace, uh, that make me look forward to getting up the next day to and I feel very blessed that I'm able to do this you know and spend the time to do it uh, and I let it speak to me you know I don't just rush in in a backhoe and dig it out and cut down trees I didn't in a lot of my product I don't they, you know I didn't cut down any trees here I just let it fit in to the space and then the space beautifully and is beautifully ensconced amongst the trees as if it's always been here This was a, a labor-intensive area, and the importance of it was that because I was going to build a house in this area, that I already had the utilities to this spot. And uh, so, and naturally, in anything that I build or make, it's very important, and I take great delight and satisfaction in, in uh, incorporating nice lighting. Because most everything I do, in a way, is kind of like a glorified light fixture and an opportunity to kind of uh, create an interesting lighting effect. So, of course, I would have to have um, the electrical and the wires and the opportunities for dimming a, uh, a wide spectrum of lighting possibilities. So that is what this is about right here. Uh, a little sunken area that I can go in and adjust lighting, uh, the up lighting around the edge. Uh, because I actually refer to this as a, uh, a garage amphitheater, even though initially I designed this to kind of, uh, you know, put in my backhoe, and it got a little fancier than would be appropriate for that, although I may still do it. Um, it's a place where the acoustics could be interesting, where there'd be uh, music, and perhaps even acoustic music. You know, and uh, so through my Oculus up above, I would also have lighting options to come down on the performers, as well as the light, of course, behind, and of course, and Equally as important is the setting and the venue, the context in which I would have up lighting and trees and so on. So that is <clears throat> what this is uh, about here, uh, having six dimmer options around and electrical. And I also have, we'll have water and a hose. I mean, I have a lot of things going on here. So this was an important spot. Uh, you know, this was not the easy way to build, actually. If anybody else were doing this, they probably would, you know, put on cinder block, you know, and then stucco lath into it. This was, so I had to kind of bend all this with, you know, you know oxyacetylene and uh, in my bender and uh, you get cut a lot and, and with these wires. But this goes deep. This ultimately, you know, this is made by, with half inch rebar with a stucco lath, metal lath, you know, to hold the concrete. But basically it'll just be a filler up, you know, with the concrete and later it will get uh, uh, stuccoed on the outside. Uh, when, a structure that, would, that will have as much weight uh, put on it, especially when it's the, when the concrete is being applied. Uh, and also just for ongoing uh, structural stability. Um, there has to be sufficient uh, space given around the rebar where the concrete can go. So when I put on this metal lath, I need to space it. And I'm spacing it with some three-quarter PVC pipe, uh, which as I each put these pieces on, I pull the pipe up, and, uh, and ultimately that comes out, this white PVC. But that gives me about an, you know, an inch and a quarter, at least, from the things that are touching, and more to actually the uh, 
the three quarter inch rebar. Um, so this was uh, part of the process. So I have carefully sculpted out this area on, with the decomposed of with the decomposed granite with my backhoe, um, and sculpted it so that that I have it as close as I can to the rebar and still be able to get behind it to twist the wires so that ultimately this will get pumped full of, of concrete between the metal lath encompassing the rebar and using the con the uh, uh, decomposed granite wall as part of the form so I just fill in this this is a very important part of the structure you know, where I've used, you know, I believe in excess of rebar just to make sure it is strong enough, but I have to make sure that there is sufficient concrete surrounding this rebar so to optimize the strength, because it actually needs um, technically three times the, the uh, diameter of the rebar in terms of concrete around it to, to achieve uh, optimal strength. So here we have anyway the rebar making sure that the metal lath keeps a certain distance away from the rebar so that it can fill up with concrete. And then I of course, pull out this as I complete it, leaving that space there. This is giving another perspective, you know, the back perspective, and it shows <coughs> here um, how close I've come with that backhoe, actually even to cut the same curve of the 13-foot uh, radius curve that most of this uh, incorporates. And we're not seeing the PVC here because I've already pulled it out, but this is kind of loose. The concrete will pour into here, so I'm using this uh, rock uh, surface that I cut out with the backhoe um, as the form, at least up for a third of this. I'll have to do something a little bit more different, but here it's going to be easy. I just pump the concrete into this space between here and the stucco lath. Actually, where to go down here? But sometimes I have to go down here to get to tie some of the wires that uh, uh, this gives you a little perspective on um, you know the distance I got in this area where I had a lot of uh, erosion and this is why I, I want to do this right now to fill this up with concrete and not have any more erosion and, and as well to benefit the trees around so that this can collect some water and um, and be helpful for their roots this I consider a high value tree. I don't want to lose it. And, uh, and, and I've already kind of impinged on its roots, you know, by digging out that area there. I've spread some manure here and so on, but, but after this is completed and the water comes washing off of this, I want it to stay in this area to help this tree. So I built this as a kind of uh, concrete swale uh, to kind of hold more earth, which I will pile in here, and also basically to get charged with the water that comes off of this structure. Okay, let me do a snot rocket. Excuse me, that was good. Thank you. You want to be clear, you know? <laughs> did you get that? You did, didn't you? <laughs>